What is the deal? Leo? Again? After 74 years in an elementary school terrarium, it's finally time for the adventure of a lifetime for this little lizard. Netflix's Leo finally gets to see the real world and everyone in it, but how do all the characters he meets stack up? Welcome to Wicked Binge. These are Netflix's Leo characters, good to evil. And as usual, we'll be starting with our most pure and noble character and working our way down to the most evil. These characters are the good. Starting out, our gold medal of good has to go to Summer. Summer is the long-talking fifth grader who's the first to find out about Leo's ability to talk. She's shown to have a lot of fear for how she's seen and how she handles her ability to grow up. In fact, she's the first one that Leo helps and she slowly starts to make friends and learn to ask questions of others so that she can make friends. In fact, she slowly starts to have the other students believe that Leo is cool so that he can solve their problems as well. Summer is a scared kid who tries her hardest to help where she can. And speaking of scared kids, our silver medal of good has to go to Mia. Mia is another one of the fifth graders in the class. Being the child of divorced parents, she's shown to be extra clingy, especially to her teachers. When Leo comes to her house, she turns out to be very sad due to the death of her grandfather and her parents' aforementioned divorce. But I am not afraid. Mia learns to not let her sadness take over and instead helps others in the way she'd like to be helped. Our bronze medal of good has to go to Leonardo, aka Leo. Leo is a 74-year-old lizard that is the class pet of Mrs. Selena's fifth grade class. Leo is taken home by the class and starts to help them through their many problems, teaching them lessons he learned by being in the class for so long. Leo's help is definitely a good thing and helps most of the kids feel like themselves and become who they want to be. Though he does lose a couple of points for lying to the kids and saying that each one of them is special and the only one that he can talk to. I'm talking to you to give advice. But as bad as that is, he certainly is a helpful lizard, even to someone who wished the worst for him. Moving on to Ellie, one of the kids who's helped by Leo and also has one of the most pertinent of problems. Being the child of helicopter parents, he has to deal with their overbearing tactics, even whilst at school, from his drone. He's coached by Leo to dump the drone and become a kid of his own volition learning to be free. Let's just give him some space. Free from none other than the drone. The drone is a mechanical marvel that follows Ellie around despite his consistent objections. The drone is trying to help as best as possible, but it's very clear that Ellie doesn't like it very much. After the breakup, the drone becomes very depressed and starts acting like someone going through a stereotypical breakup. After a while, the drone becomes a big help in Squirtle's crusade to save Leo. Next up, we have Principal Spawn, the man in charge of the school that Leo and Squirtle are in, and seems to be pretty good at his job. He listens to parents when they complain and tries his hardest to help where he can. However, he's also fiercely loyal to his teachers, so when Miss Mulligan is getting berated by parents, he stands up for her and does his best to prove she is a good teacher. Dr. Wanger, please. She's sitting right here. And finally, rounding out the good section, we have Mrs. Salinas. She's the fifth grade teacher and the one who has been running Leo and Squirtle's classroom for a few years. At the beginning of the film, it turns out that she's pregnant and has to take maternity leave. For how long? And she's shown to be a very caring teacher to her students despite that. Though her pregnancy cravings do cause her to steal food from her students on more than one occasion, even taking it straight out of a child's bag. Hence why we had to knock her down to the lower end of the good section. And with the good section wrapped up, we now move into more neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray area, starting with the rest of the fifth grade class. The movie doesn't really focus on the other characters in the class, like the two Coles, Skylar, Zane, and so on. But they're all in a similar spot because they're all helped by Leo in a variety of ways and grow angry at his lying. You happy now for ruining this? However, they do drop everything to help Leo after realizing they may have been too harsh on him. Next is Jada Wegner. Jada is one of the many students in the fifth grade class that the film focuses on. She is a rich girl and bratty snob who acts as the head of the clique of popular girls. When Leo comes to her home, he helps her realize that she's really not all that great, nor is her family. And to her credit, she then becomes much better to the people around her, including the kids she once deemed to not be good for her group. But let's finally talk about Squirtle. Squirtle is a turtle and Leo's best friend, and he is seen to be much more jaded than his lizard terrarium buddy. 
He helps Leo where he can, and while he doesn't love how things are going with Leo, he mostly ignores it. Remember to change your colors and blend in. That said, he very quickly gets jealous and records Leo lying to make him the bad guy to the kids. Squirtle, however, does feel bad and is the one who reveals Miss Malkin's evil plan and tries to help Leo where he can. He tries his hardest to make up for his past actions, and while his jaded personality does drag him down, we have to give him credit for at least trying to make amends. And let's round out the gray area with Coach Kimura, the coach at Fort Myers Elementary. He doesn't get a lot of screen time, but the screen time he does get really solidifies his place on the list. He certainly does some good things, like trying to protect the kids and making sure the field trip goes the way it's supposed to. But considering how this leads to him nearly harming Miss Mulligan and attacking the bus to try and stop the kids, we have to rank him lower. Plus, when Squirtle gets on the bus and starts harassing Malkin, he doesn't even turn his head to see what's going on despite the massive commotion, which might even make him a bad bus driver. But that doesn't mean he's a bad guy. Unlike the characters in our final category, the bad and the evil. Starting off with the final animal character on our list, the miniature horse. The miniature horse is a petting zoo animal we see at Jada's party and is not happy to be locked up in such a way. So much so that he tries to start a revolution is best he can. He's later released by Leo and the kids and escapes after causing plenty of damage. Greatest day ever! This damage is the main reason why he ranks so low, because while we sympathize with his plea to leave the cage, he did end up harming people. In the end, he does try to help Leo with his quest to get back to the kids, despite not understanding his reasoning. But this doesn't go very well, because despite treating Leo like a king, he leaves him to die as soon as he sees the alligators, certainly making him a fair weather friend. On the flip side, our next character is Ellie's mom. She is a weird case because on the surface, she seems to be a good mom as she very clearly cares for her son. She makes sure he doesn't get harmed from allergies, animal diseases, or other such things. But as the movie goes on and we see Leo go home with Ellie, we see there's more to it. The first thing is that she forces a drone to follow behind Ellie all day long and make sure he's safe. Being not just a helicopter parent, but literally a drone parent. This is a crazy decision no other parents would logically make. I mean, when the drone reads Summer's temperature at 0.2 degrees above normal, she's not allowed to come over the house. She forces him and the dog into hazmat suits to protect them from animal diseases, and is so overprotective that it probably borders on abuse. However, this borderline abuse doesn't hold a candle to the winner of our bronze medal of evil, Miss Malkin. Miss Malkin is the main antagonist of the film, and her terrible personality and teaching style become clear within moments of appearing on screen. She refuses to give out positive reinforcement and looks down on those who do. She would rather give students books so heavy they shake the room and throw out literal shurikens as demerits. She makes it clear that she not only dislikes her students, but would rather they learn in the quote, traditional way, than learn in a valuable way. Though Malkin does stop from ranking in our bottom two. It's quite obvious that the reason she dislikes positive reinforcement is because she got very little when she was young. She does want to become a good teacher and even get her own homeroom, and she earns it by the end of the film. She does leave Leo out to die in the Everglades, but by the end of the film, she nearly sacrifices her job to save the lizard. So Malkin certainly has a turn at the end of the film, meaning that she may very well grow into a good person. But taking the silver medal of evil is Mia's parents. These two are seemingly recently divorced, and while we don't see much of them, we pick up on a lot of little notes about them that aren't good. The two of them absolutely despise each other and make life difficult for everybody around them, especially the kids. Her mom berates her dad at every opportunity we see, and her dad, on the other hand, doesn't seem to care about his kids at all. In fact, he yells at her mom over the phone simply because she wasn't going along with his plans. They're both pretty terrible and have definitely caused some trauma, but we can't quite rank them at the bottom, because that dishonor goes to the gold medal of evil winner, Dr. J. Wegner. Dr. Wegner, better known as Dr. Skin, is a dermatologist and the father of Jada. It becomes very clear that he's more than comfortable raising a spoiled brat. He gives his children whatever they want, including dyeing their pets or massive birthday parties that no one else could compete with. But Wegner cares more about status and how he's perceived than what is good for Jada or her peers. 
How long does this go? In fact, he basically blackmails the school to maneuver around Malkin and her rules rather than actually try and work with the substitute. Wegner is the worst because he doesn't care what anyone else does. He doesn't pay his workers. He doesn't care about consequences. He's kind of a madman of the highest order. 